God, in his goodness and wisdom, reveals himself. With deeds and words, he reveals himself in his plan of loving goodness, which he decreed from all eternity in Christ. According to this plan, all people by grace of the Holy Spirit are to share in the divine life as adopted sons in the only begotten Son of God. From the very beginning, God manifested himself to our first parents, Adam and Eve, and invited them to intimate communion with himself. After their fall, he did not cease his revelation to them, but promised salvation for all their descendants. After the flood, he made a covenant with Noah, a covenant between himself and all living beings. God chose Abram, calling him out of his country, making him the father of a multitude of nations, and promising to bless in him all the nations of the earth. The people descended from Abraham would be the trustee of the divine promise made to the patriarchs. God formed Israel as his chosen people, freeing them from slavery in Egypt, establishing with them the covenant of Mount Sinai, and through Moses, giving them his law. The prophets proclaimed a radical redemption of the people and a salvation which would include all the nations in a new and everlasting covenant. From the people of Israel and from the house of King David would be born the Messiah, Jesus. The full and definitive stage of God's revelation is accomplished in his word made flesh, Jesus Christ, the mediator and fullness of revelation. He, being the only begotten Son of God made man, is the perfect and definitive word of the Father. In the sending of the Son and the gift of the Spirit, revelation is now fully complete. Although the faith of the Church must gradually grasp its full significance over the course of the centuries. In giving us his Son, his only and definitive word, God spoke everything to us at once in this sole word and he has no more to say. While not belonging to the deposit of faith, private revelations may help a person to live the faith as long as they lead us to Christ. The magisterium of the church, which has the duty of evaluating such private revelations, cannot accept those which claim to surpass or correct that definitive revelation which is Christ. 